All right, and we are live. Hey guys, what's up? What's happening? Welcome to Behind the Shot. I'm Noel. I am your host for the evening. And for those of you guys who are just joining now, um, welcome. And uh, all right, and we are welcome to the show. And if this is your first time to to see Behind the Shot, to watch Behind the Shot, Behind the Shot is basically an online talk show. And uh, the purpose of which is that we can, I can guest you know, top photographers from around the world. Yes, not just the country. We have a lot in store for the next few weeks. And these guys, these seasoned veterans of photography, share their top three photos and the insane, fascinating stories behind them. Uh, and um, this is our second episode. The first episode was with Ram Yoro. So Ram was my instructor and he talked about photographing caves. And uh, he was photographing uh, Paglugaban Cave in El Nido, and he had a great set of photos and a great set of stories. One of them was actually quite tragic. But this, uh, this episode is going to be great as well. We have a great guest, and he's a great storyteller as well. So for a bit of context, for those of you guys who, who don't know me, I'm Noel Guevara. I'm a conservation, adventure, and wildlife photographer. If you want to see some of my work, they're all on Instagram right down below noel guevara photo so please check it out if you have the time and behind the scenes i'm sorry behind the shot is one of my shows i have a few others on my youtube channel so i have hammerhead gearhead which is for gear reviews i have travel shows i have instructional shows all just basically the whole trending genre is there the main objective of my youtube channel is basically to use all these shows these popular genres to promote nuggets of information about conservation, wildlife, pressing issues, and it's basically blanketing all of that in these types of shows. So if that is something that you're interested in, please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell. The main platform of this show is YouTube. So what you're seeing right now on Facebook is our facebook teaser stream so before the the last photo before our guest shares the last photo we will be cutting the stream and everything else will be moving into youtube so hi to chum my best friends here and uh mabel dema vivas as well is saying hi and yeah basically welcome to the show so tonight it is my great pleasure to introduce our second guest for behind the shot so this guy is a legend in Anilao, and if not the country, and um, he is a multi-awarded underwater photographer and one of the most interesting storytellers around, and which is why he is a he is perfect for the show. So this guy was one of the, you know, it's the top of my head when I was filling up the roster for the guests for the show. He has been a Paddy scuba instructor and avid underwater photographer from 2004 2005. So this guy has gone, you know, gone the distance and there like I was we were talking earlier that there has been no looking back. He picked it and he picked his skill, his hobby and that was it. He also gained popularity by winning underwater photography mm -hmm. competitions using a compact. So that is quite interesting because you know, I also do workshops and usually my students would ask me which is the better camera, should I go to full frame, crop frame, and I always tell them that it is not really the camera. Sure, they have certain specification and characteristics, but the best camera you have is the one that you have with you, and this guy is a testament to that. So I met him back in 2014-ish. Uh, I was just starting out also, but I've gone diving with him in Verde Island and Anilao. So he's a, not only he's a great photographer, he is also a great model. So when I would always take photos with him in the background, this guy knows how to pose. You know, he is, you know, he's the Heidi Klum of underwater modeling. <laughs> and honestly, if there's anything that I love about his work is that it really shows that our next guest has a knack for lighting and animal behavior. And those two things, when you combine them, they are a killer combination. And this guy has it down pat. Um, that's why all his photos are killing it in, you know, in competitions. And he's always talking in DRT. So, you know, uh, it is my great pleasure, again, to welcome our, our guest, Pen De Los Santos. So, hi, Pen. You are now live. Hi. All right. Yes, uh, good afternoon. So, Penn, how is everything there? I was a bit worried when I first got in touch with you. You said that uh, things were a bit shaky there in Anilao, considering everything's still on lockdown. Yes. Uh, well, I live in Batanga City. Okay. 
Is it? Is, are and you the living there with, because of uh, because of diving, or that's just where you you really live? Both. That's both. I uh, well, I used to be from Manila. Okay. And the past uh, two two something years, I live here in Batangas City. Okay. And uh, you've also been telling me that you and Avic uh, have been cooking uh, meals for frontliner, so that's really yes. a good thing. Uh, well, yeah, we thank you for that. That is a really, really good thing that you're doing. So, um, can we? I'd like to ask you, how did you get started with underwater photography? Was it something that you immediately picked up when you got certified, or was it a long process of assimilation? Well, I've been shooting since I was 15 years old. Wow. Okay. My film, dad. I'm sure. Was Yes, film. My dad was an architect and a photographer also. Okay. I remember my dad, he develops uh, photos in the house. He has a dark room in the house. Okay. And we got a lot of cameras just lying around the house. So, so what was your first 50... camera for underwater? My first camera for underwater was uh, film. It's uh, CNC, wow. YS40. Wow. Okay. This was okay. in. I got this in 2004, and then I starting to shoot around 2005. Uh, I was already planning to get the Nikonos, mm -hmm. but then digital cameras came out, and they have underwater casing, and then that's it. So, what camera From, are you using now? Right now, I'm using an Olympus TG4. Okay. Also in an Olympus housing, and I'm using Enon strobes. Okay. I was using uh, the photos you see here. Mostly, I was using Enon S2000. Okay. But except for the Manta, I was using uh, Z240s for that. Do you use a snoot for your photography for your macros? Sometimes I do. Well. Okay. Uh, well, I remember using using just a torch and covering the light with my hand to make Ma it a snoot. <laughs> MacGyver. <laughs> MacGyver, yon. <young. laughs> so we have right now watching, uh, Gage is watching, right? Hello, and Gage. then Joey <laughs> is watching, uh, Avic obviously is watching, Pam, ah, Ram is watching, Avic Eugene. Yeah, Boogs is also watching. So... You know, uh, Behind the Shot is brought to you by Deity Microphone. So right now, this this Deity Microphone that I'm using, the D3 Pro. So my voice actually doesn't sound this good in person. It's just Mike is doing all the work for us. <laughs> so let's get... So when are you sending hours? <laughs> soon after the lockdown. <laughs> Deity is watching. So, you know, just keep on singing that. Okay, so let's get to the first uh, photo that we have, Ben. So I will let okay. you set it up for us. And then as you go through the the story i will just be queuing the rest of the supplementary photos okay so i believe this is a red wow. spotted lenny yes it is okay go wow, ahead this then. is a red spotted lenny um this is a very interesting subject for me i first saw this subject in tubataha and then I, since that time that i saw it I didn't get a nice picture like this, like what you're seeing now. I didn't get that nice picture from Tubataha. Okay. Because, of course, in Tubataha, I don't shoot macro. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say, why were you looking for macro in Tubataha? <laughs> and then the inspiration for this, and when we got to, I was traveling with Avic. We were on assignment uh, exploring dive sites in Ilocosur, around Ilocosur. And I was, uh, yeah, that's her. We were walking along Cali uh, Cresologo and she was doing this pose while I was shooting the empty street. And then this reminded me, parang, ano to, parang behavior ng Blenny. That would go just... <laughs> well, and then it was, it was raining and then dito siya. And then you will notice, yung posing niya rito reminded me of a Blenny. So you're then, seeing blends during one everywhere, of the types. <laughs> yeah, so, sort of like that. And then you will notice, or you know, the blouse niya, di ba, parang red spotted. Din. Right, right, right. I see that. I see that. Okay, okay. And then that shot of the blenny here. Yeah, you will notice your angle. It's on the side. Right. Uh, well, yung yung photo. This is the challenge. You know, uh, 
Alex posing from from the bench there reminded me of this uh, particular Blenny posing on the side also. Now Blennies are among uh, favorite subjects of uh, a lot of photographers, I'm sure, because of their appearance and very colorful patterns on it, especially around the face. Uh, look at this one also. And then they have this uh, behavior that they want to stick inside the house and play peekaboo with you. But when they pose, they'll just sit there. Okay. They'll just sit there and then you can shoot and shoot and focus on the eyes. You know, if, if you just need to, to take a good shot, you need to stay there. Now, the challenge for this taking these shots uh, behind the shot here is the surge. You know, when I got the shot from Narvacan in Ilocos, it's a shallow, shallow dive site. Okay. Where you find the, the blend, it's shallow. And then I think around the year, this one, this one. Yes. The shot was taken on a very shallow dive site. This is just around five meters. And it's from a wall. And then you have surge and current. Okay. So it's very challenging to take this. Now, yeah. okay. also their behavior, they would play peekaboo. They would hide inside their holes and stay there and you just have to wait. So how long were you waiting for this guy to come out? Well, to, for me to get the shot, it took me the whole dive. Wow, okay. And if you can imagine, Noel, one whole dive for us photographers shooting macro, this would take about at least an hour. And you are trying to hover in surge and current. And because you're shallow, the surge would really hit you and hit you hard. So I think I have more than 20 frames before I got the shot. Wow. So how close were you to the subject? Well, this is very close. It's I'm using a compact, okay. compact camera. This probably, I got the shot in about less than a foot. Okay. So it was good that the Blenny was cooperating with you. So what is it about the behavior of the Blenny that got you this photo? Well, it actually did not cooperate for a long time. Imagine a whole dive. I just stayed there for the whole dive. It was right. probably about about 60 minutes. Well, during the dive, uh, well, before the dive, our our guides um, gave us a briefing that we'll just be diving for around 45 minutes because of the waves and the surge. But then me being the Pasaway that I am, when I, when I find the subject, especially when I found that they have the red spotted blend, I have I had to go beyond the time, uh, dive time that they, they gave us during the briefing. Yeah. I feel you, man. <laughs> now, the, <laughs> the Blenny, well, it cooperated. Probably it got used to my presence already. Like being there, just taking shots. Um, I also had shots. Not talagang, there's nothing in it. Just the black. Just the black area there. No Blenny. So, just for reference for those guys who don't dive, right? Who, who are not divers, how big is this Blenny? Well, this Blenny, this is about a thumb size Blenny. Thumb size Blenny, okay. The head, the head is like your thumb. Right. The, end, the tip of your thumb. Okay, Mabel is asking, did you use a diopter for this shot? Mabel, I'm using a TG4. <laughs> I did got you, microscope more. <laughs> did you did you use a, a a snoot for the shot? No. No, for this one, no. Okay. No I just uh, adjusted the the strobe. For right. this one, wow, I was using impressive. Enon Enon S two thousand. I just adjusted the strobe. Uh, if you will look at the next photo with that same subject looking on the side, that was one of the challenge there. It was. Well, the whole of this blenny was like my angle. The only angle that I can get was from this side. And I couldn't get the front. Okay. That was the biggest challenge for me to get the frontal shot. And then you have other photos of blennies. What, uh, what species of yes, blenny this is one. this? Uh, this is the five-stripe five stripe blenny. Okay. This one, is, this one was also in Tubataha. You took this. this, this you took this shot in Tubataha. 
this particular shot was into Bataha. You were shooting macro Napagalitan into Bataha. <laughs> Bakit? What happened? Well, I was taking a lot of time and everybody else was drifting already trying to catch to get photo of the whale shark. But I think this was around day three and we were looking for manta. No manta. So I started like shooting for macro. So was, was this in uh, Black Rock? Rock? If you were looking I for Manta? I think it was. I okay. think it was Black Rock. How about... na ako ni Avic. <laughs> I'm sure. At saka nung, nung BM. I'm sure. Was this with Resolute? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <I knew it. laughs> yes. Correct. <laughs> okay. And then how about this shot of uh, a Blenny as well? I think... Uh, I'm not sure about the name of this one. This is one of the common blends that we found in Anilao. Okay. So if you wanted to Challenging shoot a Blenny, to. if you wanted to shoot a Blenny, you to. go to Anilao. Is that you can go to Anilao. You can get this one. Okay. So what was the challenge behind this taking this, this this shot? This one, they they live in shallow water. As shallow as two meters. Okay. Even one meter. Even one meter. They live in rocks. Okay. They make the holes their home. And they're skittish. They're very skittish. More skittish than the red spotted Lenny. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then you also have uh, this shot. I this think one, it's a very This one is one. also from, from the same series of the shot mm -hmm. center. So at this moment, from the side, I got it to like move to this angle already. But if you notice on the around the right from the middle to the bottom of the of the frame right from the right side yeah you notice there's like part of uh I think it's part of the rock that uh where it hides that's part of the home already okay so this so this guy was giving you out. shots also they're giving you different yes. angles as well well that's yes. good yes so uh, I think there's a side commercial question here, uh, Pen. Joey Swako is asking, when will your workshop push through in Cebu? Ah, <laughs> not anytime Joey, soon, we're, I think. We're not anytime soon. We're supposed to be there uh, April 30, end of April. And, voila, we can go. Lockdown time, lahat. Eh. Okay. So as soon as this is as soon as this is over. Back we'll to make workshops. the schedules. Okay. Yes. So is there is there a species of Blenny pen that you have still uh, you've been looking for or you haven't shot yet? Yes. 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 Okay. What kind um, of uh, Blenny would that be? I already found the Maldives uh, collar Blenny. Okay. But then there's another one also. This is endemic in in Maldives, and then there's another one, the leopard Blenny. That I haven't seen yet underwater, and I have to photograph it. Is but that... this is in Maldives. Okay. Again, this is in Maldives. You go to Maldives, you shoot for big subjects. <laughs> and you're still Looking shooting. For trouble, like... You're still <laughs> shooting Blenisa. Huh? That's impressive. Blenis. That's really, you know, yeah. that's really something. Well, personally, I'm not uh, much of a macro photographer, but I can I understand. You know, if it's <laughs> no. endemic there, you have to, you just have to yes. shoot it. You know, you you get you get that you know the challenge like oh this is endemic here and then you look at the book oh it's here in this dive site and it's shallow why can't we go there <laughs> because everyone's looking for the big stuff yes right yes. okay so that is the first photo from um wow. from pen yeah and uh for you guys joining this is behind the shot and we have uh pen de los santos with us our master uh, photographer for underwater. He was just talking about Blenny. So if you want to follow and uh, see more of Penn's work, visit his inter Instagram, Penn DLS. Uh, you have to kind of scroll down through the first few photos because they are mostly food. But uh, <laughs> especially this past few months, <laughs> after a few swipes, you'll get to all of his awesome stuff. Uh, you can also visit my Instagram, Noel Guevara Photo. So one of the reasons that I do behind the shot is that as of 
photographer, I feel like it's my duty to help amplify the work of others, uh, other colleagues. So this is why we have Ben De Los Santos with us to grace us with his stories and his photos. So, yes, thank you for inviting me of here. Of course, man. man, of course. And uh, we are sponsored also by Deity Microphone. So we have Deity right here. You know, it's streaming is really free, but it's the gear that really costs a lot. So thank you guys for supporting this little initiative of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, now... Uh, if you guys are joining on fa Facebook, so again, after the second photo, we just finished the first one, we will be terminating, terminating the, the stream. And you can move on to um, our YouTube, which you can like, subscribe, and follow as well. We have great guests later. I will go through them at the end of the show. So let's move on to the second photo that uh, Penn has. So Pen, let me know if you want to move to the the next photo. No, no problem. Okay. If that helps your your storytelling. So this I have to say is an awesome shot. So I love mantas. My wife Pen Thank loves ma loves mantas also. And when I saw this, it was like I actually thought it was in tuba. Right, I uh -huh. thought it was in tuba, but when you said Maldives, okay, this has a great story behind it. So, all right, take it away. Okay, so this is one of my latest favorite photos. Okay. This was just, uh, we were just there in March. Okay. Around the first week of March, we went to Maldives and got this chance to get photos of, uh, of mantas. So, you know, when you go to Maldives there, you want to shoot big subjects. So this time I had to let go of my macro, macro lens, my macro camera I had to touch. Well, I'm using a compact, so I just got a new lens, a new Enon again, Enon wide angle lens that I'm using here. Okay, Ben, I'll, I'll interrupt you a bit. Uh. I just have to say what I find impressive about this shot is that I wouldn't have thought, if I didn't know you, I didn't know any background about this, I wouldn't have thought that this was shot with a compact. So mm -hmm. for those guys, so this is still a TG4? Yes, this okay. is a TG4. With a wide angle wet, the wet. wet. Wet with lens. the wide angle wet lens. Okay, so for those of you guys who are watching, those guys who are thinking of buying an underwater camera to shoot, uh, if you are considering the TG4, then this, you know, what Penn has been able to achieve with that camera is really, you know, that is your basis for we for whether that camera can really hold up in terms of macro and um, and wide angle. No? So, yeah, just continue. See, uh, we have a, another set of photos here, all mantas, and you will see how good it is in terms of how Penn was using it, and that is what's important. Okay, sorry, Penn, go ahead. Okay, that's all right. So the challenge here, when when you're shooting with the compact, is the sunburst. You will notice the sunburst here. Yeah. It's difficult to achieve like the sun rays when you're using compact compared to when you're using a uh, DSLR or a mirrorless. Okay. But I think that that sun at the background is quite all right for me. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. So now my, my inspiration here for, for getting wide angle shots, big animals was, I remember as far back as around 10, nine years old, I was watching Jack Stone TV and I see all these big animals that they're diving with. That's how I got into got interested into shooting big animals like this. Okay. Then we got the chance to go to Maldives. I jumped the the chance, of course. And uh, this the next set of photos is actually. Let's see. Let's see the next set of photos there. Just a minute. There. Okay. Now, um, shooting big animals. You want to get as close as you can. Like compared to the previous shot, you know, this is a photographer. This is actually Arik. She's still a little afraid, a little scared to get close to the animals. Yeah. It's her first time to see mantas this close. And well, if you are shooting, you want to get a good position. Like this one, she's getting there. You want to get a good position to get the right angle, the angle you want to shoot. Like if you are looking at this photo right now, you'll see that the sun is behind the the man down the shot. I think this is around when I showed that shot, my shot to her, and then she wanted to duplicate it. That's why she went 
she went going for the shot already. Mm-hmm. I think her shot from this from this photo, I think she got one also. So if you were if you uh, if you were shooting a big animal and you only had one angle that you were going to go for, is there uh, is there a certain aesthetic you know a good really that when you're at this angle it usually looks good? Well, you will notice here if you're going to look, the diver is like kind of controlling her breath. You don't want to you don't want to to blow big bubbles because it's the bubbles that scare most of the animals. They get scared. Okay. Or sometimes they do play with the bubbles. Now, the, I think one secret here is just um, control your breathing here. You know, you exhale small bubbles. Okay. And take, take the time. Take the time. You wait. You wait. You don't need to swim after the animals. They would go to you, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a really good advice. Uh, usually you can't even chase after them anyway because they su- swim so much oh. faster than you. Uh, yes. We have a question from uh, Jones Wayne, Wayne Jones. Uh, what, yes. What is your favorite subject? Sorry, this is sort of going back to the previous uh, se- previous photo. What is your favorite subject in Anilao and why? My favorite subject in Anilao? Actually, I... You just get me in the water, which anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, for macro, I'm I'm still I'm still looking for the ghost Melibe. Uh, still want to shoot that. Yeah, Although yeah, I yeah. got photos of that. Uh, well, a lot of the nudies in Anilao are some of my favorites also. Okay, you have other. Let's go back to to Maldives, no? Um, okay, and you have this. Uh, these other From angles, the yeah. Yes. Is now this, when you shoot, is this the same manta? Ah, uh, not the same one, but this was in the same dive site. Okay. This was in the same dive site. The mantas were just. If you notice the the bottom part of this photo, and, uh, this, that's the, the next set of photos is actually. Okay. Let's and see. This, let's see the next set of photos. This is very close to the, the same one already, but this okay. was in the same. So I was shooting and this manta, this particular manta kept circling around me. And we were just shooting and playing. Well, of course, I, I got tempted to touch the bottom, the you know, the belly okay. a lot of times, but but I did not. Now, okay. This one, so I was like getting my shots already. I got the frontal shot with the belly. I got shots of other divers shooting the manta and then with this one I was like okay let's see if I can get a shot from the top okay like I wanted to get the symmetry this is like this shot is something like many people who wanted to have a tattoo of a manta would look like <laughs> <laughs> then make the patterns there you know we have a okay we have another question but I think we should finish this set first no um, and okay. then this one you have is this multiple mantas Yes, there were at least twelve manta swimming in the area when we were when we were shooting. Where were was diving. this? Which dive site was this in Maldives? Ah, uh, not sure. This is Mufushi Rock. Okay. I think that's the cleaning station, Mufushi. Okay, and these uh, these sightings of these mantas are usually gar- guaranteed. Yes, yes, more than ninety percent they guarantee. You see mantas, and then if you're lucky, if they're like in this particular dive, you were just the group. We're the last group who were there. Okay, so you have you had everything for yourselves. Yes, and we were about how many were we? I think we were ten divers. Okay, okay, so not much, no. It's just one dive boat, and then you know it's a yes. okay. We got the dive site all all for us. Okay. And then you have this shot also that I really liked. Uh, I really like the symmetry of the of the manta here. This one, I think, uh, from the first shot, then when it when this manta was about to hit me, it turned. Okay. I think I think they they get they got really good control of, you know, they can they can turn it on a dime. Okay. 
And then so he was coming at you, and then he suddenly turned. He's coming at me, and then at the last moment it turned. Okay. So if, if you're going to look at the wings and the mouth, it's like steering. Uh huh. Right? You can notice it's like steering. Okay. So for for those of you guys watching um, and who are divers, also one tri bit of trivia is that. Uh, one way you can tell if the manta that you have in front of you is a reef manta or an oceanic manta is if those dots under the belly, if they are inside within the two gills, uh, they are usually an, uh, a reef manta. If it's outside the gills, they are oceanic mantas. And those dots are also unique to each individual, so they're like fingerprints. We have a question from... Um, so, this, so this one in photo, Noel, you're saying this one in photo, this is... A reef manta. Yes, if the no, if the dots are between the two gills underneath, then it would be a reef manta. If the dots are outside, only there are no there are no outside. dots inside, then that would be an oceanic. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a Aha, question okay. from Paul Partridge. Uh, what subjects and destinations oh. are in your bucket list? Subjects and destination. I have. I've yet to shoot great whites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The holy I'm sure everybody a lot a lot of us photographers, underwater photographers would want to have a shot of a great white maybe it, inside the cage or top. outside the cage. I would go outside if I'll be given the chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing though. If you're if you're an underwater photographer, sharks really you know, they don't scare you at all. It's a complete I opposite. Love sharks. Yeah, yeah, we love sharks. Uh from again from is it Wayne Jones or Jones Wayne? Because this guy has to. He's commenting on my. Uh, his, on name, Facebook. his name is Wayne. Okay, so his Jones. His name is Wayne. Name. Okay. Yes. Yes. So how do you how do you create good composition with underwater photo and a compact? Okay, now the compact. Don't just don't think you're shooting with the compact. Um, when I shoot, I would call it. I don't look at the numbers on the camera. I just like shoot freestyle. Okay. If it if the shot doesn't doesn't make it for my eyes, I'll just take another shot. Adjust, okay. you know, adjust the lighting until I get the shot that I want. Have That's you ever how been? I the shot. Have you ever been tempted to upgrade? Yes, a lot of times. <laughs> so, yes, a lot of times. So what? So what were you looking for? Are your sponsors listening right now and watching? <laughs> <laughs> Hi Nikon Philippines. <laughs> we, have a, Nikon Philippines. we have a talented photographer right here <laughs> who's more of a veteran than I am. So I want to say well, hi. Actually, <laughs> actually, Adik is using a mirrorless. Okay. She's using also another Olympus. And I got another Olympus camera, which is mirrorless. But I got the housing for it, but I don't have the right um, port for my macro lens. Ah, uh, okay. So that's why. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I want to say hi to the guys who are watching. Also, my nephew David just tuned in all the way from uh, Calgary and Alberta in Canada. So I think it's three p three a.m. right there, or uh, over there. So thanks for watching. Um, we also have Eugene Valdez who are watching, and Jack Garcia actually has a question that is for the okay. first photo. So let's entertain this last one before we move on. Uh, what mm -hmm. for that for that uh, red spotted Blenny? What were your stroke positions for those particular shots? For that blenny, two two well, strobes. Were you Jack, using two strobes? I I have two strobes. I have two strobes. Now because you notice there's one shot there, where I was getting the edge of the rock. Okay. You remember that, Noel? Yes. I was getting that because the strobe, the light from the strobe was hitting the rock, so I had to adjust. This one. Th that one. Yeah. That one first. This one. You notice on the right side. The light was getting to to the rock, and also the blend is a little bit covered. So I had okay. to make adjustment, move my move my strobe. Now, Jack, I don't I don't stick to to the teaching where you always have to have both strobes in like you know a symmetrical position. Pagkaganito, when you have rocks that's getting in the in the shot, I adjust. Right. So uneven yung uneven yung position ng strobe with the the first shot, the yung yung nakagitna. Can you go to that, Noel? Let's go to that just a minute. 
So what you're saying, yes, Ben, yeah. is that uh, there is no set configuration no for set. strobes. It's really yes. up to you to yes. play with, play around with the light. Yes, yes. So you notice here, if you're going to look at this shot, yung lighting, yung lighting on again on yun dito sa bandang right, parang hindi na tumama. Yeah. Bottom right, dun sa mouth niya. Yeah. Halos hindi na tumama yung light. And a lot of the light was coming from the left side. You will notice there's more light coming from the left side and from the top. Okay. If you are going to look at it, the shadow from the eyes, yung budge, budge ng eye, mm -hmm. is already going to the back. You want to push the shadow to the back to get this. Okay. Okay. To get that sort of beauty shot, no? Yes. Okay, and then we have a question from uh, Myung Reyes. Uh, just curious, curious, are these mantas dangerous? Do they attack? No, they're <laughs> no, no, they're very gentle. No, they're very gentle. They're very, very gentle. They're very and gentle. They would, some of them would even like get close to you, like almost touching distance. Yes, and I have to say that they are also very smart. <clears throat> you know, they're the cousins. They are. They are, they are cousins they are. of sharks, so. Uh, yeah, they're amazing creatures to, to, to be in the water with, right, Ben? You know what surprised me, Noel, is their ability to turn. Yeah, on a dime, like, no? Yeah. They, they can turn at the last moment without touching you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm you know, sure. They can flip their wings now. Talagang millimeters na hindi talaga sa sayan dun sa ano. Yeah, they're, they're really Sometimes. graceful as well. So I guess they are, they are. Yeah, nimble and graceful. Okay, so we have gone through the first two uh, photos of uh, Pen and their amazing photos of the red spotted Lenny. And then you have that great manta. So you can see the how diverse uh, this guy's portfolio is. No? And as I mentioned earlier, for those who are joining, welcome to Behind the Shot. This is We have two streams right now. Uh, we're doing the YouTube and the Facebook. So since we're done with the... Uh, with the uh, with the second photo, we will be moving on to the third. So, again, behind the shot, uh, I would like to invite you guys to tune in now to the YouTube stream. Uh, behind the shot is brought to you by Dati Microphones, and I host. Uh, I use it. The Dati. I use Dati Microphones in all my work. So I use it for my vlogs, for this live online talk show, and also when I'm out on assignment. One of the most amazing products they actually have, and Pen, you'll find this interesting, is that they have a love mic that is actually waterproof wow so wow. yeah i heard that from from, from your the, episode yeah, with ram, with ram. Yes. so when you're shooting video you know it's a it's a especially for when you're at sea no so it's mm -hmm. a great uh, device wow. to have so uh i'd like to invite everyone who is watching this uh episode on facebook to now tune into the youtube stream uh the link is right above in the description and if you feel like it, please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that notification. We have a lot more content. And we also have awesome guests coming in on, on Friday and then next week. And I actually have my next month booked for Behind the Shot. So it's awesome. Wow, that's busy for you, huh? It is, it is. It, it's, it's quite fun. All right. So, guys, I will for the guys in Facebook, we will be tuning in now to YouTube. So see you guys there. Okay. All right, so let us continue now, Pen, to the third and final shot. And I believe... Okay. We're down to the last shot. Yeah, I want to set this up, and I think this is what you're really known for, Pen, no? this, this awesome shot. No? Uh, I, think, I think many people will remember me for this shot. So what happened? Can you, set, can you tell us about the shot? What, what's the, when, is, when did you shoot this? Where did you shoot it? Uh, what were the conditions? Well, this shot was taken in the Nilao during a bonfire dive. Okay. I was I was diving, of course, with my favorite dive buddy. Si Mary Vick. <laughs> I was gonna ask who is him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Need well, we ask. During this particular dive, <laughs> during this particular dive, um, there were many squid in the area. They were okay. having a feast. How deep was they this? They were having then? a feast. This is shallow. This is probably about Eight meters at the most. Okay. Now we wow. had we had the bonfire set on a buoy at about six meters. Okay. Now there was a big swarm. I think we did this like the perfect timing. Um new moon. Suppose we had we had the moon set over the horizon already and peak of the high tide. 
Wow, okay. So that's your triple combo for for shooting black water or bonfire. Nice. So you know, everything just worked the, out, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, oh, the oh, darkest sure. of the dark night ng walang buwan, tapos peak high tide, and then uh, ano yung isa? Basta, triple gang ba yan? <laughs> Nakaset na yung moon. Moon has set already. Moon is gone over the horizon. Tapos, new moon, and then peak high tide. That's your triple combo. For a nice bonfire or black water dive. Pen, Walang current. Did, did, you see, did you see this shot happening? I, think, I mean, were you waiting for it? Or it's something like, okay, it formed, and then, you know, it instinctively you took the shot? Well, for, a, for the longest time, since since I started shooting squids, since I started night diving, I've seen squid and have been shooting them. And I have had this shot at the back of my mind for a long time already. And because I've observed them going in formation. Okay. Now this shot is like for me a once in a lifetime shot of just one shot and that's it. Wala na. Okay. Parang ano to, parang sniper shot to. One shot, one kill. That's it. After this, they scram to the darkness already. Okay. Especially the one at the back. Parang the one at the back was calling the other two already. You know, I think even if it was instinctive on your end, no, I think, uh, Pen, what we have, what uh, our viewers have to understand also is that the fact that you're able to nail this shot at that split second, it also yeah. is the result of uh, you know a long... You know, a lot of training and then a lot of experience. Yes. You know, it's not yes. something that you know. It, it was good luck in the sense that everything conspired for the shot to happen, but it it was really the training mm-hmm. and your experience that really backed you up in this. Well, in this shot for shooting squid, for shooting squid on, well during a bonfire, I have observed that the squid are great hunters. They would they would not go to the swarm right away. I mean. They would not go would not go inside the torch the light of the the beam of the torch they would just be outside of the beam okay in the dark yeah they'll just be there lurking waiting waiting for the perfect timing to 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 feed on something the the squids are also very smart no so squids are also cephalopods they're similar to octopus uh, yes. octopuses it's octopus, it's not octopi, apparently. And uh, cuttlefish. So I actually <laughs> swore off eating, no? Yes. <laughs> Cephalopods. So we have a question. Um, oh, sorry. We have a comment from Eden Walsh. Oh, and then she, he, she? Uh, Eden saying that this was a winner at last year's, last year's DRT. And yes, I remember yes, this. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was. And you got a hex suit, uh, wetsuit for yeah. this, right? I remember yes, I that. got the hex. I got the hex. <laughs> okay. And then... Um, uh, JC is uh, asking, what was the depth? Depth? This is shallow. This is 8 meters. Maybe even shallower. Okay. Okay. So, sorry. You, you mentioned 8 meters earlier. But was 8 meters the bottom of the bonfire? Or was it the, uh, the, no. That's no. the depth of this squid? The bottom. The bottom from, from the bonfire. Probably 14 meters. This bonfire, uh, not black water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the difference with with the bonfire, ito you can you can get to the bottom, twelve meters, fourteen meters. Okay. The, the bonfire was set on on a buoy line at about six meters. Okay. And then the plankton, the plankton were having like a big swarm around uh, around the beam, and then. These squids, I have, I've seen them. They were outside. They were hunting. They were waiting for, for prey to go by. And then they were lining up like this. And then I'm like, okay, let's see if I can get this shot. Nice. And the other slides, I think there are other slides. Like, you know, there's one, the next, the next photo, this one. Wow, this um, is an impressive shot, Ben. Yep. Squids are some of my favorite subjects. Okay. Like, Wayne was asking, what's my favorite subject? One of them is are squids. There's a lot of different types of squids. Like if you are going to look at this shot, there's like a face with the, with the long horn there right in the middle. Right, yeah. right smack in the middle. And Ben, it's, it's funny because the, the previous shot of the three uh, 
the three photos that you have sorry uh, let me cue that back in so this shot everything is symmetrical and then you have that again on the face of this guy you're, you're one lucky guy to get all of these in your in your <laughs> posing well Noel, you're, we're talking about 15 years of shooting <laughs> <laughs> my first few shots of uh of squids were taken with a compact compact camera i was using i think uh, one of those Canon Ixus cameras. Okay. And a torch. Okay. And a torch, a single, single torch. That's what you were using. Okay. Then getting them. Not they were not the shots were not like this, but they were photos of squids. I think on my Facebook page, the oldest squid photo I have there was around 2009. Okay. So wow. Since since seeing them on my first night dive, I was like. You know, hooked with shooting squid. We have, and this one, I'm sure, a lot of <laughs> photographers like shooting squid also. Yeah, I'm sure. No, me also. I have to admit. So, Mabel has a funny question. Demo Vivas, how do you get animals uh, to face you like that? I usually just get animal butts. <laughs> um, one, another, you know, one secret. Uh, for squid, try using blue light, Mabel. Okay. Over red. Over red. Um, squid do not like the red. Octopus, you're okay to shoot with red light. With squid, try using blue. Well, I haven't tried green. I've heard green. Green colored light is better to, to shoot squid. So you're, you're, you're talking about the focus light, right? The focus light, yes. Yes. So when you're shooting squid, blue is preferable. So as opposed to, let's say... You know, red for Mandarin and so on. Mm -hmm, yes. Okay. Yes. Let's go through some of your other shots. Excuse me. No. They come in many this colors. One, this one was close to the bottom. The background is already the bottom. The sand. This was taken in... Uh, at the house reef of Destino. Okay. Uh, we, have, close to the we have a question from uh, Angel... Borja, she says that you have any tip for beginners? I am your number one fan. Of course, you are my daughter. Angel. <laughs> <laughs> there you tip go. for beginners. Um, just shoot. Dapat lang siya number one fan can. mo, no? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, magaling na rin mag shoot yan. She already nice. won one competition. Nice. Um, Angel, my tip for beginners: dive more. Okay. Dive more and shoot more. You know, hone your skills. Keep honing your skills. How many dives have you logged, Ben? How many dives have I logged? Well, the when I stopped logging my dive, I was at 2,000 dives. And that's like, you know, that was year 2008, 2009. Wow. Probably I have around 7,000 dives already. That's a lot. That's a lot. Okay, you have this other uh, two shot of uh, squid again. This one was before I got the three shots, the, the the squad. Okay. I have been observing and I have been observing and seeing them going in pairs, going in small groups, and even going in huge groups. Like they would go in, in a big squad or you can say in an armada of squid. Wow. Especially during daytime. So am I correct? They, these are. But I like shooting them during. During night time because at night time they show the colors. Yeah, yeah, that's true. During daytime, it's almost impossible to shoot them, uh, with beautiful colors like this because. During daytime, they're like almost invisible to the eyes. Right, right. These are big fin, uh, reef squids. Is that yes. correct? Yeah. I think this. Yes. Yes, these are big things. Okay. Uh, this is that a nice one shot also. also. That one also. You see that the, the color is different with this one. Yeah. This is more brownish, no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And then these are from the same series, from that squad photo? Yes. Yes. That's from the same series. They look like they were communicating or something. Looks like the wife is telling the guy <laughs> to go home already. <laughs> That's like Avic telling you to stop shooting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then these the uh, these squid, uh, 
these ones are the same as the as this is from squad. a different dive yes this, okay. this was from a different dive um when i got the shot of the tree that was aligned a lot of people were telling me ah oh, pen that's that's an impossible shot you must have you must have just photoshopped it <laughs> and so during this dive when i when i got this one i was diving with with a friend and he wasn't shooting then he was just observing us and then when he saw this particular shot he yeah. said like pen is really pen really does it <laughs> it's like <laughs> this is like my proof that you just do it you just the the squid would would go line up like this for you right right and it's also your understanding of the behavior of the species it, that i think helps a yes, lot yes. you know if you can't just go in there blind and assume that everything's going to work for you no matter yes. how skilled you are so that's what i always yes. tell people as well that uh skill is only half the equation you have to it's also partly because of opportunity and that's where your knowledge of the animal behavior comes in mm -hmm. And then you also have this one. This is from the same series. That's the same. That's the same group, actually. Okay. From the previous one with the five. Right. That's the right. same group. So they were like swimming and doing this formation. Okay. And to get this kind of shot, you need to double your patience. You are approach a very patient very, man. very slowly. Yeah. Yeah. Approach very very slowly. Sobrang, sobrang bagal. Your breathing controlled also. Wow. Okay. And you don't want to spook them with with your light, with very bright light. That's true. So again, the blue, uh, so the blue, uh, tint, no. Uh, the blue, would the work. blue gel the blue on your work. on your focus light will work a lot to your yes. advantage. Yes. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's it for the third uh, photo from from Penn. So guys, uh, for you guys watching. If you want to see more of Penn's work, visit him on Instagram, Penn DLS. You know, get through the the food photos that uh, Penn has been posting. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. making me hungry. Yeah, sure. right. I, I got I got this uh, ten photo challenge and I haven't accepted it yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, if you want also to see some of my work, you can also visit me on Instagram, Noel Guevara Photo. So. Behind the Shot, uh, again, is brought to you by Deity. Pen, do you have any projects ongoing? Uh, you have, of course, the workshops right now are postponed. Do you have any projects that you want to you know, mm -hmm. tell us about? Well, as soon as, as soon as the lockdown is over, the ready, right set up, like go to Cebu, get that workshop done. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are we planning. We're still planning to go to Maldives in October. Uh, if you guys want to want to join, we're still open. We still got a lot of uh, available slots for October. And when we do that, when we go to Maldives, of course, bring a camera. I'll teach you a few tricks. Okay. It's, there's there's going to be a free workshop on board the liveaboard. So is this gonna be a formal workshop, Ben, or is it more of like a casual workshop? Uh, it's more it's more like a casual workshop where you just dive and then I would answer all the questions, set up the camera for you if you need to right you know help you with with using your strobe if you have and if you don't have a strobe, just a camera that can still shoot. Okay, okay. All right. Well, uh, Pen, I'd like to thank you for uh, giving us your time. I know you're very busy. I know you're helping out a lot of frontliners, and that for me is a is a very very thank good you thing. for inviting me here. Very impressive, and thank you for for gracing the for the second episode of our show. Uh, I know you have a lot more photos, and I think it would be a good idea to bring you back somewhere down the line. Uh, I know you have a lot of stories. I mean, seven thousand dives. You know that has ha have to have a lot of stories and photos along with it. <laughs> okay, so Pen, I will say goodbye to you first, but please uh, stay in our conversation. So don't go yet. I will just end the show and then okay. I'll talk to you after. So guys, uh, you want to say okay. uh, goodbye to the guys watching? You have a lot of people watching right now. No, you have uh, Wayne, you have Jomai, you have uh, Neil Patrick Zerudo, you have Mabel, you have Jag, Eden Walsh. Oh, poor mga have... diver lahat natin nga. <laughs> so your usual troop, huh? <laughs> Guys, let's dive when this is over. All right. Lan, and... Thank you for watching. Noel, thank you for inviting me here. It's an honor to be 
to be your guest here. And I was actually okay. worried it's difficult to, to tap Rams. Photos the, the, oh, Rams, yeah, yeah, the other yeah. thing. Wow. Wow. Talagang very nice choice photos. Wow. But, you know, but ben, then again, I thought, okay, we'll talk about <laughs> different photos. Anyway. Yeah. And you're a great storyteller, so that you have that going for you. So, Pen, thank you very much for for joining us. Um, stay uh, stay in our conversation. I will get back to you in a few minutes. Okay. Right? Okay. So for, all right, my Pen. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So guys, thank you for watching the second episode of Behind the Shot. Uh, you have seen Pen's work, and they're impressive. And this is what the show is really about. You know, uh, this these great. Uh, images are backed up usually by amazing stories. And our guest for Friday is actually Bo Mancao. Uh, uh, and this guy ha is, has no shortage of stories either. And um, the biggest change that we're going to have for Bo's episode is that since Bo is both an underwater photographer and a, a videographer, we are going to stream actually video clips. And uh, Bo has some interesting clips lined up for us. So we will be seeing his videos from Tubataha and then from Napantau and also from uh, Protea Banks in South Africa. So it's going to be an exciting, exciting show, right? So these, this, these uh, guests that we have were really made this first week, you know, really, really great. I opened with a bang. So for those of you guys who are still here, please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell. After this week, next week, we also have conservation photographers. So we have Steve Denif. Um, we have Shin from um, Thailand, a National Geographic explorer who's also going to share his photos. He is also a conservation photographer and specializes as well on sharks. And then we also have Boogs Rosales uh, on the last day on Friday of next week. So, And then after that, we have documentary photographers and then landscape and so on. So behind the shot, it's not just about underwater. It's really about top photographers sharing their great photos, top three photos, and uh, awesome um, stories behind them. And behind the shot is brought to you by Deity Microphone. So... Uh, Noel Guevara here um, saying goodbye to you guys and thank you for watching. Again, subscribe to my YouTube or follow me on Instagram and I will see you on Friday for Bowman Cow's episode. Thank you guys and enjoy your evening.